Okay, good afternoon to um, members of the press who are with us today. I'd like to give an update on a few matters. Just last week, when Disney cruise ship returned after an absence of one year, I was greeted by enthusiastic visitors who expressed congratulations on the progress that the territory had made in its recovery after Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Indeed, considerable effort has been put into the recovery, and I'd like to express my gratitude and that of the territory to all those who have stood by your side. The work of recovery is ongoing and will continue for some time, and is constrained by available finances, but has also been spurred by the hurricane season that we are now in. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to give an update on our progress and the state of readiness for this season. Recognizing the extent of the damage to homes and businesses and the time taken to settle insurance claims and obtain supplies, government has extended the customs relief several times, the last being up to the end of September. And I'm pleased to see the progress on the rebuild of homes, of private homes and businesses. During the recovery, government has also placed $15 million in the housing support project, a support that many are taking advantage of. And that was um, as a result of my last discussion with the Minister of Health, who had responsibility for that project this morning. The repair of public structures has also been high on our agenda, with a focus on hurricane readiness, support for education, and support for the economy. Community centers throughout the territory have been identified as important in a state of preparedness. Emergency works have been completed in Anagada and in progress on all other centers except for King Garden Bay and Bruce Bay, for which contracts have been recently awarded. My government has also made grants to the Catholic Community Center in Virgin Gorda and the Church of God of Prophecy in Justin Dyke to assist with the readiness of those structures. The education system has received attention from day one, and as we go through the recovery process, my government intends to provide and manage state-of-the-art facilities and equipment. Nine schools were reopened after the storms, while six were deemed unusable. Since then, my government has been working tirelessly to carry out repairs, and with the help of a number of donors, to rebuild or repair affected schools. With the assistance of UNITE BVI, my government is expected to complete works on the Brigado Flax Educational Center by early next year. In fact, the portion of the work to be completed by the Ministry of Education will be going out to tender shortly. Most of the buildings at the Elmo Stout High School were totally destroyed. Students were relocated to the old Clarence Thomas Limited building at Pazi Estate where the school operates on a shift system. The rigorous after-school program for grade 79 students will also continue this academic year. The immediate goal is to refurbish the four-story L-shaped building at the Elmo Stout High School campus in order to facilitate return to a full-day school and my government is working diligently to get these work started through loan funding. The works will be put out to tender shortly in anticipation of completion in early 2019. Thanks to the North Song Foundation, the Robinson Neal Memorial Premier School is scheduled to be completed and reopened early in the second May year. The Richard Foundation completed a small two-story building to accommodate the students of the Justin Lake School, which also had to be rebuilt. The Innes Adams Primary School is on target for opening for the 2019-2020 academic year, while preliminary works for the rebuild of the Eslin Henley which is Learning Center will begin shortly. The Social Security Board is working on the completion of the Innes Catholic Pre-Primary School, and a student should be back in that school by the second term of this academic year. Repairs at the Leodona Delville School I expect it to be completed for the start of this school term. We will work at the Ivan Dawson School with help of the All Hands on Hearts volunteers as slated for completion in early October. Meanwhile, no work have begun on the Isabella Moores Primary School as my government is still considering whether this school should be rebuilt 
as a junior high school. I'm particularly grateful to the teachers, parents, and students of these three schools for their patience and understanding on these projects. Full assessment of the other nine schools which have been in operation since hurricanes have now been completed. My government will be working in priority areas for repair as a matter of urgency to ensure that these schools can continue to operate at the optimum. Her Majesty's President Balsam Gut has also been undergoing major repairs which are in the final stages. With funding from the United Kingdom, works are completed on the roofs, peri perimeter fence, and internal zonal fences and gates. As a result, the 21 inmates who are housed in St. Lucia are now being returned to the Virgin Islands, with the first 11 already back and remain intent to do so shortly. We thank the government and the people of St. Lucia for coming to our aid and assisting us in this area. The court system, which supports law and order, also received early attention with repairs to the High Court, and after refurbishment works, the commercial court is also back in operation. A fully equipped magistrate's court was opened in July, and my government also increased funding to security agencies, including the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and the Immigration and Customs Departments. The airports and seaports are receiving constant attention, as well as the Tortola Pier Park, the repairs of which have supported the early return of Disney Cruise Lines. My government has also recently invited tenders for repairs to the Central Administrator Complex, which closed at 10 a.m. today. There's much more to be done, and we are working steadily with our resources, the Caribbean Development Bank, and with the promised UK guarantee to make sure that our recovery continues and we build back better, stronger, smarter, and greener. As we seek to rebuild our homes and public structures, we are also doing what is necessary to provide banking services to the entire community. And in this regard, we'd like to thank Banco Popular for its continued commitment to the territory and especially to the Virgin Gorda community for the efforts. Thank you. Please state your name and your, the media agency you are affiliated with. Good afternoon, Premier Kathy Richards from JTV News. Uh, could you explain a little more in detail as to what's the situation at Cane Garden Bay and Bruce Bay that you alluded to that is um, still yet to be addressed? The, um, when I said still yet to be addressed, I also said that we have just um, let contracts for their uh, repair. So the work will begin on them very shortly. Okay, um, Premier, quickly on uh, Isabella Morris. Uh, how long uh, will it take government to make that final decision as to what you're going to be doing about Elizabeth, Isabella Morris? That is a conversation that we have started and we will continue towards a resolution because we have for some time been considering whether to have maybe two uh, several high schools or whether to have one high school and junior high schools. But there's a conversation we are having and we'll soon um, you know, make a decision on that. And the fact that we are waiting to have the school back in the operation suggests that it be soon that decision will be soon coming. We haven't um, made a decision on the others as yet. And the reason why um, is about Isabella Morris is because when we look at the need for the junior high school campuses, we're looking at the different parts of the island. And in that area, in the western area, there are three schools, three uh, primary schools. And it is logical that one of them should then be turned into a junior high school. Lillian Smith, Smith. Still following up on my colleague's question about um, Isabella Morris Primary, um, <coughs> is it that, could you say um, this decision would be made within the this upcoming academic year or even this academic term, this first academic term that we're entering into? It certainly will be made during this academic year. Okay. 
So what are the, the facility until then? The students are all being satisfactory housed so that they can all attend school on a regular basis. All the students in that area and that part of the island. Sir, we understand that um, something of a university, um, you know, what's it described as an offshore university kind of thing? Um, <laughs> comment on that. Um, what's your opinion on you know, that coming year? There has been, over the past several years, um, the location of what we call offshore medical schools in certain areas of the Caribbean. And, um, for example, you would have heard that there was one in Dominica, which has recently transferred to, uh, been transferred to Barbados because of issues following the hurricane. Um, there's one also in, um, in Monstrat, and that one is uh, uh, that is the one that applied for to have a campus on the BVI. We have looked at that positively, and uh, we expect them to, you know, be here and start the operations. Mayor, there has uh, been um, there has been some discussion about the need for offshore schools here in the Caribbean and the place in the Caribbean, but when one reviews um, the the schools themselves. Um, we see that the results that they produce are very good and they are, have a, a high standard and the students are very successful. It would be a, a medical school, I understand. As a medical doctor yourself, you, you are very satisfied with you know, the, the quality of um, education I produce for the BVI? It's not education for the BVI. And the yeah. <laughs> no, it's not education for BPI students. That's why it's called an offshore medical school. It's essentially um, a medical school for students from other parts of the world, primarily America. Oh, okay. mm. Still going back to the medical um, topic, the government <coughs> was once very keen on medical tourism. Is this something that's still being pursued? Oh, yeah, that is also being pursued. And uh, we have already... Um, had experiences in certain areas of that. We've had several surgeries of a unique nature which will not be able to carry on in, in, in BVI as um, surgeons have brought their patients here to have the operation. So the people's hospital was a, a big part of that plan and I think there was talk about accreditation. Is that process complete? Not as far as I know but it's ongoing and certainly the People's Hospital was a big part of the project. And um, I'm not sure if you have visited, but of course you have. Um, but you know, it's a, what we call a state of that facility. And it has um, the equipment and so that uh, you, found, you, know, you find in you know, major hospitals. And um, a fine cadre of doctors and nurses, which will continue to, you know, to improve on. of the prison and the prisoners being brought back from St. Lucia. Could you say uh, what, what is being spent on uh, those prisoners who are away? And could you say whether or not um, whatever cost it is is being subsidized by the funding from the UK? The, um, I cannot tell you the quantum, but I know that the St. Lucia government were very kind to us and allowing us to have our prisoners there. And we have we received, and the government of the BVI has made the commitments made to the government of, the, of um, St. Lucia for housing our prisoners there. Okay, so uh, no money that is coming from the UK recovery for, the, for that sector is being spent for that? That was um, money provided by the government of the BVI, yes. The money that has been paid to St. Lucia is coming strictly from the government of the BVI. C correct, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one other thing that we haven't heard of uh, in, <coughs> in recent times is that what's happening in the electricity se sector. Um, we're into the <coughs> midst of, of a new hurricane season. Um, how ready is BVIZ? Uh, what hurdles they were that have uh, yet to be addressed or have been addressed? Mm -hmm. to make it uh, ready? 
Uh, right currently, they are all areas in the territory. In fact, all buildings which are in a state of preparedness to be able to receive uh, ele electricity have, uh, are receiving the, um, the current all attached. Right? Um, of course, the electricity cooperation and its facilities um, will still could still be at risk for any time there's a major storm at this point, right? Because all the lines, the lines are still, most of them are still above ground. Well, we do have uh, a plan which has already begun to become to have that facility become more resilient by having moved the lines underground that's already begun in process. It'll take some time before that process can be complete. Sir, you said um, loan funding would be used to help with the restoration of the L shaped building and um, also BVIEC and probably some other schools. To be clear, this will be the CDB um, loan. Yeah. The L shaped building that is the Elmo South High School. The funding will come from the CDB loan for that particular that's building. 65. So it should be released by then for the school to be. It's uh, as a matter of fact, it's uh, just about ready to go to, uh, on to for bid, and once those bids come in, the work will begin. Okay, so the, mo the funds are released. The funds will be ready by then. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a, you see, with the CDB um, loan, there's a process as with any other banking, and so you go through this process. Once the process is complete, the bid is in, then the funds are released for the pro for the work to begin. I am working toward that. Mm -hmm. Seriously, yes. And, and what of the, while we're on the subject, what of the um, freedom of information as it relates to this year? That is um, a bill that's in the making, that it is being developed. So it's not ready to go, to be taken to the House of Assembly at this point, but it's something that we are working on. So it's not this year then? Um, I cannot give you a time. But all I can tell you is that we're working on it. And as soon as we've had it completed and passed by the cabinet, then it'll be taken out of the House of Assembly. Yes, sir. I understand. I'm just Chances are that it won't be complete before December. Okay. Um, a few months ago, it was announced that the CEO of the BVIEC will be resigning. Has a replacement been found for her? I cannot give you an, a definite answer on that at this point. I'll have to do, you know, check it and get back to you on that. Okay. Now, Premier, after, the, after last year's uh, disaster, we know there was a massive exodus of uh, both nursing, <coughs> but nursing and other staff at the BVA Health Services Authority. Has that, has that been replenished? If not, what is being put in place just in case we have another disaster this season? Yes, in, in many instances that has been replenished. But of course, work continues to be able to recruit the necessary full complement of staff that, is, that was there before and that is needed. The government of the Virgin Islands, through the office of the Premier, the Minister of Finance, you know, the Financial Secretary, uh, is the boss, the person who will be doing the negotiations uh, for any further loans for the for the country, because the Financial Secretary is the person who is officially recognised uh, in that regard. Uh, that is correct, I did say that. But what um, the position is, 
that apart from the funding through Caribbean Development Bank, you would recall that I did mention a guarantee, off of a guarantee by the British government. Uh, we are now working through the, that guarantee uh, before we can you know, go on to having you know, acquiring loans, yes. It's um, in any discussion on financing or mortgage or lending, it does take some time because there has to be information which is provided by the lending authorities and to be able to satisfy them that, you know, this, these loans can be made. We have to have discussions with the UK representatives because this matter will have to be taken to the House of Parliament for their approval. I believe so. I'm working on that steadily. Yeah. All right, we'll take the final yeah. question. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. I'll jump in on that, that one. <laughs> um, what how much uh, is your administration setting aside or has set aside you know, to retain uh, Mr. <coughs> Farrar and the team of international attorneys that are consulting on the possible challenge with the public registers? Yeah. I'm afraid that information I don't have as well. Um, you know, in the briefing such as this, unless I was prepared for that answer. Thank you. <laughs> Good.